Regnet and Rio come right out from the get-go and say, okay, here, here is how the digital divide is layered, the different levels, first level access, second level use, third level benefit. And all those levels build up on each other. And if you if if you're missing any of these levels, then you you then the digital divide is persisting. Dark hexagons. Dark hexagons are considered served by the CRTC. And this really is one of the key findings from the Hambly and Raja Buen reading. If you look up here where I'm mousing, okay, well, no, let's even go down, let's look at Woodstock. Okay, so we see Woodstock. This this is um considered served. It's it's black, it's a black hexagon. And it's considered served. So people in this area and companies providing internet, they're not able to get special funding from the Canadian government to enhance their internet. Okay. However, they're, consider they're considered served, but do they actually really have internet? Well, let's continue on with these excellent maps to look into that further. Okay, oh, oh before we do that, just to recap here. So basic service availability, so Hamley and Raja Buen find that 20% of the households are underserved, which is almost a quarter of a million premises, premises, which I guess would be homes and or, you know, businesses and, and schools and that kind of thing. Okay, this is, so here they get into critiquing the, the use of hexagons. So the Canadian government and, and, and the provinces also, some of them, Statistics Canada, use a 25 square kilometer hexagon to map out areas about do they have internet or not. And the idea is, so here's the hexagon, right? The purple hexagon I'm showing on the screen right now. We see like a lot of farmland here, it looks like. And, and we've got a river going through here. It doesn't say where this is in Southern Ontario, but maybe some of you can identify it. Uh, so we have one of the 25 square kilometer hexagons. So the Canadian government is saying, okay, is this area served or not served? And according to the Canadian government, this hexagon is served. They, they're saying, this whole hexagon, if for them, it's like either it's served or it's not. And so they're saying this hexagon is served. But then if you look at it, and if you look at what Hambly and Raja Buen, Raja Buen are making crystal clear to us here, I said, that's Industry Canada. They're saying, okay, this is a hexagon area. This area is served. Hambly and Raja Buen, based on the SWIFT uh, uh, research, it's only this yellow area that's actually served. So that's quite like all these, if you look inside, everything inside this hexagon, hexagon rather, that is not yellow is not, is not actually served, but the government thinks it is. So this is a glaring example of how this hexagonal way of mapping whether or not areas of Canada have 5010 high-speed internet or not is very flawed. There's some vacuuming happening outside my door. I hope that's uh, not causing a problem. Okay, next I'd like to turn to, uh, I think, uh, page 11 of the reading. Uh, Carpe, I think, makes good use of headings to help focus what he's writing and then also help us as readers to make our way and parse through what he's positioning here. So really good subheading here, follow the money, page 11. So again, in order to center us, sort of re-state, uh, re-illustrate why this is important to talk about dis disconnection when it comes to social media, 
Carpe discusses, again, presents statistics. about how much Facebook shares are worth and that, for example, in 2017, Facebook generated $40 billion in revenue, $40 billion in revenue. I imagine that's U.S. dollars, but it isn't said. Always good to note the currency. But yeah, $40 billion, Facebook made $40 billion in 2017. Wow. So big money at stake here. There's a lot at stake for Facebook to continue to give you new ways to stay on their platform or for them to buy platforms that you like better, such as Instagram and WhatsApp. And when Carpe notes here that when social media platforms have to report that they've, you know, every fiscal reporting period, every quarterly report, when they have to say, oh, actually, we didn't gain as many viewers in the past few months as before, or we actually lost users, that, you know, Carpe illustrates that that can have a direct impact on the, the, the shareholder value of these social media platforms. So I would like to see at least a discussion amongst Canada's elected officials and amongst Canadians to consider, for example, should specific sporting events be required to be available through CTV and CDTV if Rogers and Bell own the rights to those sports and therefore that they would be available over the air for over the air rabbit ear viewers or for people in Canada who subscribe to a basic cable satellite or IPTV service, which is still the majority of Canada Canadians in 2021. That's changing with online streaming, but you know, could, should internet service, uh, copyright service, copyright holders for live sporting events in Canada, should they be required to make, sometimes they do during the Raptors playoff run and championship season 2019 as i noted earlier ctv and rogers decided to make many of the games available but they didn't initially and it was on them to decide whether or not they wanted to put it on ctv ctv2 both owned by bell or in the rogers case city tv so i would say we should consider mandating requiring that the copyright holders make it available through basic TV channels in Canada. Or if they're gonna have it on their TSN or Sportsnet channels, that those channels have to be included in a, an affordable basic TV package. Those would be my recommendations. I think that would be a good way to make sure that the copyright holders in Canada, Bell, Rogers and others are able to make a profit on the copyright uh, that they've secured for a very expensive sports event, uh, sporting broadcasts, right? But then Canadians, I think, would also have fair access. They wouldn't need to resort to illegal pathways to these sport events, sporting events. Bottom of page 120, quote, the telegraph would end the division among classes and races that the industrial age brought about by bringing a new cohesion and harmony to society. End of quote. Of course, you know, unfortunately today, we still have class divides. We still have racial divides, right? So the Telegraph in the 1850s did not end that. It was probably a bit optimistic to think that it would. How does that Knowing that now about the telegraph, how does that how does that make us think a little more realistically and critically about how we use the internet today? Can Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, can they all really make our lives that much better? Can we have a whole new society, elect a new government, change our worlds, 
get jobs, get partners, get, uh, you know, opportunities and benefits and enhancements just by being on the internet, just by having a mobile device. No, right? I'm sure you would agree. It, it doesn't just cure everything. This is really at the heart of the Moscow reading. Um, the, the people who did the, so the te telegraphers or telegraphers, the people who would on one end of the telegraph have a written message or typed out maybe, and they would tap, 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 send it out on, as Morse code. The person on the other end would hear the Morse code, write it out or type it out, and then give it to somebody. The people who did that job, who knew Morse code, who did the tapping, Moscow knows that they were, quote, turned into heroes, end quote. They were like superheroes, maybe. So this was January of 2015. And here you go. Here is, you know, it's Mr. Benjamin Kloss. This is the PhD graduate student. Um, there were some other groups that also uh, intervened, filed complaints. But Ben was really a core part of this. Um, that Ben and others alleged that Bell Mobility Quebec Core Media, which is a Quebec company, mainly based in Quebec, um, Initially, Rogers was also named in this complaint, but Rogers sort of said, oh, okay, we'll, we'll stop what we're doing so that it's more net neutral. And so by the time this decision was made, Rogers was, you know, no longer, um, you know, being reprimanded. But the claim here under Canada's Telecommunications Act of 1993 is that companies like Bell were giving undue and undue undue and unreasonable preference and disadvantage in regard to the billing practices for their mobile TV services, Bell Mobile TV and Illico.tv. That's Quebec Corps Videotron video service. So the so as um, the uh, journalist Christine Dobby who is now at the Toronto Star, if you want to continue following her great journalism on, on telecom and, and, and business and, and, and legal matters in Canada and around the world. As, uh, as Dobby noted in, in my documentary, Ben V. Bell, although Canada's Telecommunications Act does not explicitly say the words net neutrality, the spirit of net neutrality teaching all, uh, treating all content equally, not charging more, not slowing down, certain sites over others that spirit of net neutrality where does it kind of manifest itself in Canada in the telecom regulations well it's in the telecommunications act of 1993 and it's the mention of and you know you're not required to read the telecommunications act for this course but if you want to it wouldn't hurt um, it's the sections in the telecommunications act where they discussed undue preference and undue unreasonable preference and disadvantage. So if, in other words, if uh, Bell Mobility has to kind of treat some of content on the internet, on their networks differently in order to avoid like their network from crashing, <laughs> right? Uh, then, you know, the CRTC says, okay, you can do that. It's called traffic management. You can, do some kind of traffic management in order just to keep everything running at an optimum level, but it can't be undue and unreasonable traffic management. You can't be throttling somebody because they're downloading movies or video games between midnight and 5 a.m. What was sort of the lasting benefit of this program? And in the conclusion, we're into the we're at the conclusion now, gang. So Sarkar notes that you know. She comes back into a more of a broader discussion about these information communication for development programs. And there's a key myth. We talk about myths a lot in this class. One of the key myths that Sarkar points out in this reading is the myth of leapfrogging. Right? If you think of a frog, a frog can leap. There's an old video game called Frogger. Maybe some of you have had the pleasure of playing where you're leaping across a road 
to try to avoid getting run over and you jump on the back of a turtle or a log and try to get across the river away from predators, crocodiles, whatever. <laughs> Frogger, check it out. Uh, <laughs> um, I would play it right now if I had a copy and if I wasn't teaching. Maybe I'll find it for the weekend. Um, oh, I got so distracted by Frogger. So, sorry, everybody. So Sarkar notes that this is a real problem with these, you know, ICTV or ICT information communication technology programs that they think that somehow by just enrolling a student for, I mean, six months is quite a significant period of time, but that somehow if, if you go in this program, you will leapfrog into a whole better life. And, and that just does not happen. And because of these programs that buy into this leapfrogging myth, genuinely or not, um, that it just sort of, Sarkar notes, perpetuates these divides. It's like, oh, well, we've got these programs, like, just go in these programs and, like, after the program, you should be all set. And if you're not set, well, you know, it's not our fault. Like, what you must be you. You must be doing something wrong. Really great quote here from um, the bottom of 978 from Sarkar, quote, Ethnographic research demonstrates that this focus on access, however, ignored lived realities of sea lampur women and questions related to politics and power, end of quote. So these programs are really missing key factors in the ability of these women to enhance their lives, and they can't just magically leapfrog like in a video game. 